Greetings, this is Steve McKenzie, former 20-year member of the Visual C++ team, now retired. And this video is about using Google Test to verify your solutions against the C answer book as a baseline. If you've ever studied the C programming language book, the very famous and legendary book by Kernighan and Ritchie, uh, you'll know that there are several exercises in the book, which I think are still very relevant and even more relevant today with embedded programming. Uh, they may seem trite today because they uh, do a lot of character by character manipulation in the early chapters, um, sort of a get C, put C type thing where you're uh, reading one character at a time. And it also seems rather quaint because you are um, using input devices to get the characters, like typing. You're getting one character time at the at keyboard. And so we do get away from that. And instead, we open up a big file, a file from the Linux kernel, and open that up and manipulate that. But I would say that these type of exercises are still relevant today, especially with embedded programming, where you do read uh, bits at a time and uh, build state machines based on the sequence of bits and so on. And also these exercises do help you to think like a programmer and, and the C programming language in and of itself helps you to think like the computer. And so contrary to what a lot of the voices out there, especially from the C++ camp, are saying, and they are saying, stop teaching C, I say just the opposite. I think C is a great programming language uh, that you should start with to learn how to think like the computer, learn to understand more about uh, the computer and the hardware. It's a language that's still very ubiquitous among electri electrical engineers and in the embedded world. And um, uh, get you closer to the bare metal. Okay, so anyway, what are we doing here? So we're using Google Test, and we are assuming that the C answer book, which has been out since 1989, uh, has the correct answers to the problems in the C programming language book. And we can assume this based on the fact that it's peer reviewed. Uh, Kernighan was one of the reviewers, there are 12 others. Now that's not infallible, there could be bugs, but uh, uh, we're using it as a baseline. It's just as dependable as industry standard conformance tests that you might pay thousands of dollars for to test your uh, C++ libraries. So it's, it's legit, it's reasonable to use the C answer book as a baseline. So then what we're doing then is um, we're getting the Google test suite, which I have instructions on how to do that here. Here, let me get rid of this. So I've checked in um, some of the tests, the uh, some of the first chapter. I'm not just going to give you everything because that defeats the purpose. I think what's very helpful is for um, you to go through the exercises. Ideally, first come up with your own solutions, then type in, not copy and paste, but type in the C answer book solutions. Or even if you want to reverse that, typing in the C answer books first, kind of get an idea of what they're going at. They, there's a definite, they use a definite pattern and then seeing if you can improve upon it. Either way, you're going to learn a lot. And so here are the instructions on, um, from my GitHub and that's at GitHub forward slash Steve Mac 321 forward slash K and R dash Google testing. And that's where this stuff is. And here's the instruction, just a few. Uh, I got these instructions on how to set up the um, uh, Google testing from a blog by Eric Mistad. So I give him credit here and here's his website if you would just want to use it there. Uh, but I just keep it short here. And so it's just a few lines of code and it assumes you're running Ubuntu. And I use Ubuntu because it's easy to set up dev tools. I, I usually, I, I don't install the full GUI. What I do is I'll install the server version and then just install uh, some light uh, window manager, if any at all, like um, uh, XFCE. And so anyway, that's how you get the stuff. 
And so here's the code. So I have Vim open with two windows. Uh, the window on the left is the test driver code. And here, let me go down to um, So if you can follow my mouse here, here's the main of the test program. So the whole architecture here is that you are testing libraries and not just one. The Kernig and Ritchie exercises are all each an individual program with their own main function. And so what you do instead is rather than use a main function, you just write a function that's like part of a library. And that's what we have here over in the right pane. And so I have this numbering scheme, which means base, which means the C answer book, because we're using the C answer book as the baseline. And there's another file that is called uh, chapter01 underscore test dot CPP, which is your implementation. So you're, you're comparing your implementation with the base implementation. So we have ways of comparing that. We're using the Google test framework for doing that. So back over here, here's the main. And so Google test framework gets initialized here in the main program of your test. So yes, uh, Google test compiles all of this into one binary. And there's lots of advantages to that. Uh, you can get good code coverage against your library because it's compiled in as opposed to uh, header-based libraries won't get all sidetracked onto that, but you just um, you can use separate CPP files, simply include them in your main test driver file, include them as like header file, and they get compiled in, and um, uh, you can just call the functions as if it's all it's it's all your code. You can call the functions, and so the nice thing about Google Test is uh, they have lots of analytics built in which we I don't demonstrate here uh, but these are the individual tests so I'm, we're up here at uh, exercise 110 I call my test compare so I'm going to uh, there's two types of ways of getting results I've found so far in these exercises with the exercises sometimes you're just going to pipe out to a file you know, let's say it's remove all the comments in a source file so there's no way of really like returning a tuple of that, right? And you could try to return like a vector of strings or a string, I suppose. But instead, we just let the program write out to a file. Okay, so there's, you read in this file. This uh, kmod.c is sort of our uh, data. And this is a, this file comes from the Linux kernel. So we open that, we parse it. And um, we're gonna count the, and so in this particular case, when we count blanks, tabs, and new lines, there's just three variables, and we can return them in just a tuple. And so for that, here, um, we can just compare the tuples of the base test and the um, in your test. But in something like removing comments, we have a helper function up here that um, converts a log file to a string, standard stood string from the C++ standard library. And so then you ask Google Test to um, compare those two strings. For the ones where we're returning value types as tuples, here in 8.1 is an example, uh, we get the tuple as a return of running the test. So we return it base, we turn it from test. And then we just do a member-wise uh, comparison of the tuple. You know, we compare both tuples at position zero, position one, position two. And so those are the two ways. Uh, I think there's another one where um, we return a string. Um, yeah, here we go. In number 13, um, right here, it returns a string. So first we read, now I didn't check, Google test might check to see if the sizes are the same. This might be redundant, but I check to make sure the sizes are the same and that the contents within the stood string are the same. So they're going to do that. Google test, I haven't looked at it, I'm assuming they overload 
these based on type and um, uh, it knows how to um, uh, compare these uh, standard C++ library containers. And so that's what we're doing. So that's the gist of the program. Um, go up to my GitHub and um, I'll leave a link in this video of, of where the GitHub is. Follow the instructions to set up um, Google Test and then add or do these over. Remove the tests that I have in there and type it all in yourself. But here you see how the test framework is set up. Okay, so now we're at the clean state. We've just synced our, G, our Google tests are already configured. You'll have to do that part on your own. But now we've synced to um, the KNR Google test repository on my GitHub. And so the first thing we do is run CMake to set up all the make files for the build. So it's CMake, and because we want it to be debug, we define this variable. D means define. C make build type equal debug. And then the name of the uh, make file lists. Here we go. And so there we go. So it's done. So now all we have to do is run make. And so if there's any build errors in your code, it's going to happen during this step. And so now you can run it. And there you go, they all pass. Now if something doesn't pass, we built in debug, so we can run uh, GDB, install GDB. And if you go uh, dash TUI, that's um, the end curses mode. It's a visual, visual mode, graphical mode. Um, so it's called uh, run tests. And so there you go. You get source code debugging. And, you know, I'll, I'll refer to you to how to set up breakpoints. But you can set a breakpoint D page 80, or I mean line 80, and then run. Now, you notice that the screen got all messed up. Do control L to refresh the screen with GDB. Uh, and so there you go. We can step into it. And now we're into the source code of creating the log and so on. We can go next. We can look at variables, P, you know, anyway, we're not going to do a debugging lesson, but that's how you can run this thing. So, and then you can quit. And so there you go, we passed. And if it fails, it goes, it, it, the Google test uh, framework will pipe out the diff. So you can see wh where your error is. You don't have to add printfs to your tests, which is pretty nice. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I can end the video now. So, um, Thank <laughs> you.